Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to First Good Shepherd Lutheran Church Saturday night worship service. We're so glad that you're here. And what we typically do is take prayer requests before we begin our, begin our time of worship. So uh, does anybody have any prayer requests this evening that they'd like for us to lift up during our prayer time and worship? Yes, Danny? Danny? Things would work together for good for him. Yes, Cindy? Yes. Protection and safety from all harm and danger. Anyone else? Yeah, don't make them too long. I can't write that fast. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yes, Christine. Oh, really? Okay, she is the fourth grade teacher, is that right? Sixth grade teacher, Mrs. Provo, am I getting that right? The, Popova. What was P -A -P -O -V -A. that? P-A-P-O-V-A. Popova. P-O-P-O. Okay. <laughs> the sixth grade teacher, she lost her brother. Blaga, I believe, is her first name, which means grace in Bohemian, something like that. Terry? Okay, for her, Terry's sister, Anne. Patience, right? We all could use some of that tonight, I'm sure. Actually, the, the message tonight is going to be on our epistle reading from the book of Philippians. That's one of my favorite books. It's all about joy and uh, and we'll, I'll be sharing three points to that sermon message uh, from, with you from Philippians chapter 4. Before we begin worship, let us pray. Lord, thanks for bringing us here safely tonight. It's so good to be in your house. Uh, we ask that you would bless us with your presence, that you would take away any worries or anxieties or fears or any distractions. We just want to fully worship you and have you feed us in this divine service with your good gifts of word and sacrament. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Uh, renew us, reprioritize us as we come apart for a time to be with you in fellowship with you and one another. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said. Amen. We ask for the peace, power, and presence of the Almighty, one true triune God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 28, verse 13 says, Whoever hides his sins does not prosper, but whoever confesses them finds mercy. Gracious Father, because of Jesus, we ask that our sins would not be held against us. There are many greediness, gossiping, gluttony, grumpiness, grudges, gloating, and glaring. For these and all of our sins, Father, forgive. Restore and help us to begin again with a new and right spirit. The Lord God loves new beginnings. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. By grace, through faith in Jesus, your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take my life and let it be. Consecrated Lord to Thee. From uh, Isaiah chapter 61. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with beautiful headdress. And as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. With thankfulness and gratitude, let us rejoice, rejoice in the Lord, Lord always. always. For his peace, which passes all human understanding, let us rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always. For the contentment that he gives, whether living in need or having plenty, 
Let us rejoice in the Lord always. For his blessings that support this body and life, let us rejoice in the Lord always. Because we can do all things through him who gives us strength, let us always rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Almighty God, you call us to trust in you for our salvation. By the greatness of your mercy, we have the assurance of forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ. With praise and thanksgiving, we come in his holy name. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for this, the 19th weekend after Pentecost, comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25. A reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading comes from uh, Pastor B's favorite book, Philippians, chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gladness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. At the peace of God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. This is the word of the Lord. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted cattle have been butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. 
Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. He asked, How did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, Tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Krista, do you know what a collage is? Okay, so when you take a couple pictures and you kind of mix them up, you could like clip stuff out of a magazine and then glue it on a new piece of paper. Well, when I got my first computer, I, want, I like to do collages. So this is one that I made. I call it the yin and yang of me. And yin and yang means like opposites, but they complement each other. So on the one side, you've got animal. So I decided to wear my animal shirt today. He's awesome. He's a drummer. He's kind of wild and crazy. And I can be that way too. Sometimes I get a little wild and crazy and loud. And then there's Eeyore. He's a mellow guy. Some people think he's depressed, but as you can see in this picture, he's smiling. He's not depressed. He's just mellow. So that's the other side of my personality. Well, we've been talking about shouting praises to God, right? The last couple children's chats. The funny thing is, I think it was two weeks ago, right after the children's chat, this was the song of the day. So like I said, Deacon Steve and Pastor are clapping, some other people are clapping, and this is what I did. My leg, kind of moving, that was about it. That's my excitement when I praise God. Well, the point is that God created all kinds of people. There's some people, like in the Psalms, it says, clash cymbals and play trumpets. And then there's like Mary in the New Testament and Luke, she just pondered all this cool stuff in her heart. She's like, look, this is Jesus, the Son of God. And she just pondered it in her heart. That's me, I'm more of a pondering kind of worshiper. So whether you like to clash symbols and praise God or whether you like to just ponder stuff in your heart and praise God, God loves it all. He just wants our praise. He doesn't care how we do it as long as we praise him and give Jesus all the glory. Will you all pray with me, please? Dear God, thank you for variety. Thank you for clashing symbols. Thank you for pondering in our hearts. All praise goes to you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, in our pain and in our misery and also in our gain and our prosperity, continue to be our health and life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we've got some great scripture readings for tonight. The first one, the Old Testament came from Isaiah chapter 25. Really talking about the end times, what heaven is going to be like. We get this in Isaiah in an Old Testament book. Uh, the Almighty is going to prepare a of a feast of rich food for all peoples. Anybody like Echo and Rig up in Summerlin Steakhouse? Ever heard of it before? One of my favorites is right down here at Andiamo's or maybe Vic and Anthony's, a golden nugget. Great steak. Out of some great steakhouses in Vegas. Amen? Well, just think what it's going to be like at the end of the time because the best of meats and the finest of wines is the picture that Isaiah gives us of the end times. And he's going to destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the cover that enfolds the nations. In other words, everybody's going to bow down and confess that Jesus is Lord. There's going to be no more death. Sounds like revelation, right? 
There's not going to be any more tears. Revelation, once again, he's going to remove the people's disgrace. In other words, there's going to be no more sin. And in that day, they're going to say, surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice. That's the theme word for tonight. Paul uses it in Philippians. Let us rejoice, it says in Isaiah, and be glad in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> just wanted to see if you guys are still awake out there, just checking. And then we get to the gospel reading, according to St. Matthew, the 22nd ch chapter. And we, and we see this parable again. Listen to this. The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet. Speaking of fine meats and aged wines. Aged wine sounds good right now. I like Cabernet. Don't mind an aged Cabernet. It tastes good. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them, hey, come to my banquet. Who is he calling out to? He's calling out to the Jewish people. Jesus himself was a Jew. He came for everybody, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. Come to my banquet. I mean, it's going to be a heck of a feast. You're not going to want to miss this. But they refused to come. Then he sent out more servants and said, hey, tell those who've been invited, I prepared my dinner. The calf, the, you know, everything's been butchered. Everything's ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But you know what they did? They didn't pay any attention. They didn't come to the slumber party. So the king's hacked off. He can't stand this. His, he sent his army and he destroyed those murderers and he burned their city. How dare them refuse my invitation, as we might say in today's, of my salvation that I freely give in Jesus Christ. They won't take advantage of that. The wedding banquet's ready. The invited guest didn't come, so you know what he did? He went to the street corners, invited the banquet. Anyone who could find, guess who those people are? Those people are you and me, the Gentiles, you know, non-Jew types of people. The bad as well as the good. I mean, the wedding hall's now filled with guests, but when the king came in to check out the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. I mean. What's up with the wedding clothes in this parable in Matthew chapter 22? How'd you get in here, bud? Well, the man didn't have all of the say. In fact, the text says that he was speechless. And the king said to the attendants, tie him hand and foot, throw him outside into the darkness. There's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I think we all know what that is, right? That four letter word called hell. The Bible talks about hell. So we got to talk about hell once in a while as well. It's a real place. God is real, the devil is real. The heaven is for real, and hell is for real as well. But what about the robe? Well, see, back then in Israel, when they had a wedding feast, the host would give out a robe and say, hey, you're part of the crowd. You're here to have fun. We all are here to celebrate. I want you to put on this robe. That was the custom back then. That was the tradition. So if you refuse to wear the robe, fourth and long get out because everybody wears a robe at my party it's the robe of righteousness and God has given everybody a robe he gave us our robe when we were first baptized or maybe it was later on in life you're a teenager you're 20 or 40 something or 50 something maybe on your on the deathbed like the thief on the cross and you believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit works saving faith in your heart. You believe that he died for your sins and rose again. You just got your robe. And you get to enjoy eternity with Jesus forever and ever. But those who check out of this life, who refuse to put the robe on, who say, man, I don't want that robe. I don't need that robe. I'll depend on my own robe. I'll depend on some, some other robe from a celebrity or a rock store, or maybe even a sporting team, or maybe it'll be the security of my job. I'll find my own robe. Thank you very much. Heave ho. You can go. Now we come to the Philippians reading, which is quite different from the Old Testament. You thought I was done preaching, sorry. <laughs> we get to the Philippians reading. Paul's talking about rejoicing. Our whole uh, Kyrie was on rejoicing. And, and Paul is, is saying that there's a secret to this rejoicing thing. And it's, and it's found in three things that I wanna share with you briefly tonight, okay? And maybe to help you remember this message, 
um, it's going to be the letters JCP. Now, maybe to help you remember, how about J.C. Penny? Anybody remember that store? Some of us are probably old enough to remember. They're, they're kind of filed for bankruptcy in May, I understand, and they're, they're closing all their stores, so that's just another retail supermarket that's going out of business with online sales and Amazon and everything else. But remember, that's how you can remember tonight's message, J.C.P. Joy, contentment, and peace. Say that with me. Joy, contentment, and peace. And man, that's what we get every time we gather for worship. For the people who aren't here, people who aren't at the banquet of worship, guess what? They're missing out. Amen? Because they're not getting some joy. They're not getting contentment. And they're not getting peace, which Jesus freely offers to us in confession and absolution, in the preached word of God, in the spoken word of God, in the Lord's Supper. That's where we get that JCP. I mean, it's really important today, especially with COVID and the stresses. And I mean, people are, they're all pent up and they're high stress and they're uptight. People are full of anxieties and worries. And, you know, doctors have said that stress can basically kill a person. Can it not? I mean, all the worrying and the diseases and the sicknesses, a lot of them can be tra traced back to stress. So when you come to a worship service like this and you receive the healing power of Jesus, you're doing a great thing, not only for your soul, but also for your body. Um, God, through the apostle Paul, tells us, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. And I don't know how he was able to do this, but Paul's actually writing this letter to the church at Philippi and the guy's in jail. I mean, he's locked up. I don't know if he's in a minimum security prison or a maximum security prison, but he's saying, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Are you serious, Paul? You mean you can rejoice in good times? You can rejoice when you have plenty and you can rejoice when you're in need. You can rejoice when you're healthy and you can rejoice when you're sick and you can rejoice when you're blessed and you can rejoice when you're stressed. Man, I want some of that. Please pass that meal that menu on to me it's how he coped with life uh, for the apostle paul joy joy meant that even when life was stressful when things were not going his way uh, when his life was on the line i mean he went through hardships and he got shipwrecked and he got beat up and he almost got stoned on a couple occasions he knew still that the lord was by his side and that's why he could still say Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. He knew that he was never alone and that Jesus was always near him. In that, he could always be joyful. His attitude can teach us an important lesson. It's that our inner attitudes don't always have to reflect what's going on in our outward circumstances. Paul could be joyful because he knew that no matter what happened to him, whether well-fed or hungry, sick or in good health, rich or poor, he could still be joyful because he knew at the end of the day and at the end of life that God loved him. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. That's what the apostle Paul did, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Are you kidding me? The joy set before Jesus going to the cross? I mean, what's up with that? And I think what's up with that is that he knew that although the cross would be painful, he knew that although he was going to die for the sins of the world, that his death, because he loved everybody, would bring about their salvation and the righteousness and the eternal life that had God had planned since the beginning of time. They once had a contest in, over in England one time, and some of the contests over there, they're kind of intellectual, and this one was the best answer to, which is the shortest way from Liverpool to London? And one bright person who won the award wrote back, good company. Good company is the shortest way from Liverpool to London. I'm sure you've been on a, a long road trip before and you know that good company can make a, a long road trip very pleasant. You're on a long trip right now, my friends, and it's called life. And my gracious, it's a very long one. And it's an important one. And guess who sits next, down next to you every day as a believer? Jesus Christ your wonderful companion, who is with you always, even to the end of the world. Joy is knowing Jesus. 
In Philippians chapter 4, our epistle reading, we find another secret to healing that takes place in the life of a believer. We come now to the letter C in JCP, and that word C is called? Yeah, it's called contentment. That's a huge word, isn't it? A word that we often struggle with this side of heaven. The apostle Paul says in verses 11 to 13, I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret. Shh. It's a secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, living in plenty or in want. I can do everything, Philippians 4.13, through him who gives me strength. Now, being content doesn't mean that you stop setting goals or striving for excellence in your personal or professional life. It means to be content with the things that God has given you, material or otherwise. Don't look around at others. That's the sin of comparison. That's the other C word. The opposite of contentment is comparing. You got to count your blessings. And we need to be content with what we have instead of always wanting more. Some of you know the Christian author and pastor Max Lucado heard of him before. He uh, wrote a book that a parishioner from a church I served in Texas gave me a long time ago, back in the 2000s, about this. And he said in one of his devotions, uh, what if God's only gift to you were his grace to save you? Would you be content? What's contentment? A better job than the one I have, that's for sure, replies the man. Money and lots of it, says another. An education for my kids. I could be content with that, a third one adds. But would you be content? You beg him to save the life of your child. You plead with him to keep your business afloat. You implore him to remove the cancer from your body. What if his answer is, my grace is enough? Would you be content? From heaven's perspective, grace is enough. If God did nothing more than save us from hell, could anyone complain? Having been given eternal life, dare we grumble at an aching body? Having been given heavenly riches, dare we moan about what we don't have? Which takes us to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 to 8. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. When you allow the healing presence of joy and contentment into your life with the power of the Holy Spirit, the end result is going to be the P word, peace. Joy in the Lord and contentment with his blessings will ultimately bring about peace in your life. And that's why Paul says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, will guard and keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. You see, God's peace is different from the world's peace. True peace is found not in positive thinking, not in the absence of conflict, or even in feeling good. It comes from knowing that God is in control. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 27, and he's trying to comfort his disciples when he says this, Peace I leave you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Christ came to bring you peace. Someone once said that all the armies that ever marched, all the navies that ever sailed, all the parliaments that ever sat, all the kings that ever ruled, all of them put together have not brought the peace to this world that this one person has brought, Jesus Christ, who has taken the brokenness of our lives and put them all together in one peace, P-E-A-C-E. -E. So joy plus contentment equal peace. Not the kind of secret we want to keep to ourselves, is it? We kind of want to pass that one on, don't we? Joy, contentment, and peace. It's kind of like throwing a rock into a river. What happens? You get that little ripple effect going on the, on the top of the lake, don't you? It just kind of keeps on spreading. And we're to be like that. We're to be telling others about the joy, the contentment, and the peace found in Jesus 
according to Isaiah 9, verse 6, who is the Prince of Peace. A man who had written a, a, a great best-selling song, he was out driving his car, and he, yeah, he got lost out in the country, probably driving around Pahrump somewhere. And he stopped by a farmhouse, and he got up on the porch, and there was an elderly woman up there. She was just kind of sitting and rocking with dark glasses on. And he went over, saw the man in the yard, and he asked how to find the way. And as he was receiving directions, this man was just whistling all the time. And, and he said, yeah, I'm kind of interested in your whistling. Uh, why do you whistle all the time? The farmer said, well, I whistle all the time because my wife became blind after, after 42 years of marriage. And it was a terrifying thing for her. It made her feel very insecure. And I found that when I went outside and I would whistle and I'd just keep whistling, it was my way of telling her, Honey, I love you. I will never forsake you. And I will take care of you. Can you hear him whistling now? God is doing it. He's talking to you right now through this message, and he's telling you that he cares for you, that he loves you, that he's going to be there for you when things are going well, and even when things aren't going so well. He loves you, and he has sent his son to show you the way, and the way is through Jesus Christ. In him you have forgiveness from all sin. Remember that he will never leave you or forsake you. So let the healing of JCP, Jesus Christ's presence, how about that for JCP? Jesus Christ's presence. Permeate your entire being. And let the joy and contentment bring the peace that only God can breathe into your life. JCP, you've got the secret, but don't keep it to yourself. Tell somebody about it today. For as it says in John Philippians 4, verse 13, you can do everything through Christ who gives you strength. God bless you all. Amen. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The response to the petition is, Lord, have mercy. Invited by your word and encouraged by your promise of mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church, for the leaders of the church, for all pastors and missionaries, for those preparing for church vocations and those considering full-time church service, let us pray to the Lord. For a welcoming spirit in our congregation, for boldness in our invitation to those without a church home, and for a willingness to serve our neighbor in need and the stranger who crosses our path, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the healing of the sick, those hospitalized or in nursing homes, for those recovering 
And Lord, especially tonight, we ask for healing and recovery for Melinda Ray, who had a stent inserted this past week. Lord, we lift up Mary Chauncey and her family with the passing of her brother Homer. Lord, we ask you to work things out for all good for Danny. Lord, there's been so many people affected by the hurricanes in Texas and Louisiana and, and Mississippi. And Lord, we just ask your protection and uh, your comfort for all those families. Lord, we lift up Mrs. Popova, the uh, sixth grade teacher here at Mountain View, on the loss of her brother. And Lord, we lift up Anne, hopefully, hopefully that uh, she can have her surgery soon. And Lord, we lift up those we name silently in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. All these things, Lord, we pray you grant according to your mercy and to fill us with contentment, trusting in your will for all things. To you be all glory, honor, and praise as we lift our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First, honor God with everything you own. Give him the first and the best. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with your wine. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please rise. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Father in heaven, thank you for blessing us with your presence, with your Holy Spirit, for filling up our cup tonight through your word and sacrament, for imparting to us the joy and the contentment and the peace that we need to make it through another day and another week ahead. You are the bread of life, Jesus Christ, and thank you, Father, for giving us your Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Thank you for inviting everyone to your banquet, including us. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said, Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Anyway, hey, one year chronological Bible, Artie Anderson. You can, everybody look towards the back and just say, Hi, Artie. Hey, Artie. Hey. Uh, we had 30 people sign up for the one year chronological Bible last weekend. And she was kind enough to come tonight along with Richard, who is ushering. And they're going to be here tomorrow, too. So if any of you would like to sign up, it's $12. We're going to begin January 1st, just like we did with the one-year Bible this year. 
Please see Artie. If you can do a prepayment of $12, that's great. If you'd like to pay her at some point in time a little bit later, that would be wonderful too. And we'll probably order right around the 1st of December. Is that how we did yeah, it last year? Yeah, that's what we did last year. Right. Yeah, around and the then we'll, we'll be passing them out in December. So it's really fun to already see 30 people signed up for 2021. It's going to be a, another great year in the Word. Yeah, and I actually, we, we talked about this a little bit, but we're trying to recruit some folks to facilitate the studies coming up next year. Mm -hmm. You will, we will have a complete printed out uh, study guide. So it's not like you have to teach somebody something. You just have to facilitate the discussion. So if you're interested in doing that, please give us a call and let us know. Yeah, Sunday mornings. Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Right over in the conference room. LCEF update, Reverend Billy Brath. I always like saying his name, Billy Brass. Sounds like a good old Baptist from Texas, but he's not. He's Luther. Um, he was here last week, and he preached, not on Saturday night, but he was here Sunday morning, folks. He, he was there. And we and, gave him some grief Sunday morning about yeah, missing he, Saturday night. But if you, And you want to check out his sermon, you can do that on our YouTube channel, because we did record on Sunday, too. Thank you, Rick Pollock and company, for doing that. Uh, Logan Niebuhr was here as well. And uh, we also had the training, uh, the Vision Congregation meeting, and uh, we were able to have about 32 people here, right? Yep. And we all answered two different questions. A couple of, actually, I have more than that, but two really basic, important questions that uh, are going to be gone through by the vision team. Yeah, we've got about eight people serving on the vision team. We've got somebody from the elders, somebody from the council. We've got a youth representative. Yep. I think the average age in the team is in their 40s. How about that? Yeah, that's quite a bit younger than any one of us. <laughs> anyway, that's going to be fun having them put together some things. And we'll be meeting with Billy Pratt on Zoom Tuesday night. Thanksgiving pies. John, you've got some words for us this evening on the pies. Are you going to have one put in your face this year? We did that last year. <laughs> Just checking. Um, <laughs> you got me all flustered. Now I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Thanksgiving pies. The youth do this as a fundraiser each year. If you're interested in supporting us, please come see me. There's a variety of flavors and costs, and I have the list here. Each year we try to do some kind of uh, uh, outreach as well, and so this year I thought, let's do that. Let's if if somebody who doesn't come to church that you know. I lost my thought. If you know somebody who comes to church who doesn't come to... <laughs> if you know somebody sitting at home that needs a pie, please let John know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That and the way to get them to come to church is to have them come pick it up here at church. If they come to service that day, great. If not, still give them a pie. And the thing that pastor doesn't know about is that well he knows it's pastor appreciation month but what he doesn't know is that miss tiffany's class wrote a bunch of letters and this is miss miss tiffany from mbcs she's walking down the center aisle now she's the it director and she's a coach and many other things there how cool is this and actually it should be staff appreciation month uh, deacon steve no, and john no. yes that's what i think so <laughs> i and appreciate this tiffany i'll be sure to read each one and uh, thank your Make kids sure for... you answer every one of those oh, two. Boy, you're, you're putting the pressure on. Uh, okay, thank you for uh, remembering me. That's, it feels nice to be appreciated. And by the way, I still want to see a pie in John's face. Um, I still have it on my iPhone, a recording of one of the youth that put it in his face and, I, and then went like this a few times. That was kind of fun. Yeah. yeah. After worship prayer, if you want to pray, praise or give thanks, let me know, and I'll be glad to do that with you this evening. Two things real quick. Okay. I always have trouble with this word rejoice. Okay. I don't know what joy is or how to rejoice. <laughs> I'm supposed to answer that? I don't know. <laughs> I'll get back if, with you if, later. If you like. <laughs> okay. Sock time. Yes. This is a little different this time because... We have to do both socks. So, on this side, we have eggs. Great breakfast food, right? Well, you can't have eggs unless you have bacon. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And with that, we say, 
Amen. Uh, yep, that too. God bless. God be with. Go in peace with joy and contentment. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great evening, everybody. See you next time.